Well, hey everyone, it is 316. This is our uh, kind of last, this will, this will be the last cutting for the season. Um, we, uh, Wes is still in Winslow, finishing up uh, forwarding, and we're trying to finish up the truck, and it's getting a little wet there. Um, Timber, come here. And we started this job. It's about 40 acres, probably 30, 35 acres of wood. Uh, it's a nice day out. Come here, Timber. Oh, Partridge was in that top there. <laughs> um, Timber, come here. We'll get a little video of Jeff running here, the processor. Come here. I finished up cutting. The wood's not really anything terrific, but... Um, hey. Now, get him a little closer. Timber. working the end of this trail yeah so we came here and uh, I moved here last week and Jeff moved Monday I've got this whole side of the job done cu cutting wise and then um, on the other side behind Jeff there's a little wooded bog so we, we got to get across that it's a lot of small fur I'm assuming this was cut pretty hard 30, 40 years ago. So there's a bunch of fur like these piles right here. And there's a few occasional uh, white spruce. Well, you know, oddball pine like that one and Jeff's got there. up the butt. Timber. Timber. The last thing we need is for you to get whacked by a branch. Come on, dickhead. Oh, this is Timber's favorite thing to do. Roll in the snow. Timber, come here. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna stay over here. It's really, it's really thick in here with underbrush. The deer have been all through here like crazy too. Um, pretty much just, they're like flies. You go through an area and they kind of, run off and then they come right back in. They don't want to leave the police. I don't know what he's sniffing for. Anything six inches above the ground around here gets peed on. He smells all the deer. I think he sees all the deer beans or deer poop and he thinks they're chocolate covered raisins which they're not Timber! Those are not chocolate covered raisins timber. No. Get a little better might get a little better angle here. It's also this type of wood it, it would have really stunk without the buncher but it's really hard to get all the brush and stuff out of it so a little easier for Jeff. Just a lot of whips and shit and non merchantable stuff that you kind of have to pick through to get at the wood you actually really want. It's gonna work out decent. I need fuel and I just finished up uh, cutting the yard out, which I'll show you guys when we leave. And we're 
trying to cut as many fir logs and spruce logs as we can. Those uh, go down to five inches. I was a little grumpy earlier this week just because this wood isn't all that great, but I'd be interested to see. This may be one of those jobs where the volume is better than I think it is, which is likely, so. It gets into smaller wood like this and you can process a couple, two or three trees at a time. There's ways to get around the how small the wood is and stuff. Timber. Timber. That's a white spruce right there, a little bigger one. Probably maybe 12 inches, something like that. processes nice there's a couple small ones they'll process both those at once I guess the one thing about this small wood is it's really easy on the rigging you know we've been kind of a he's got to flip his brush around like that and get it back in the trail but we've had a steady diet of bigger wood which is you know it's, it's hard on that processor some of the brush and stuff out of the way where he's going to process the wood. That kind of helps Wes out where he can do it, where Wes doesn't grab a big bunch of brush with the wood. brush out of it. What do you think, Timber? dead fur. Not much they're worth dealing with. So that one will probably try to clean up and get some a fur log out of it. 16 footer and the rest of the pulp. He's getting the brush out of his way. cut 
12 footer. Yeah, it looks like 12. All the spruce fir logs are by weight. So obviously if you had to scale all those, it would probably kind of stink. Small fur. Well, it's nice and straight, anyways. You know, that 8 or 10 inch popple is a nice process in wood. that's all the brush and stuff that it's really kind of hard for me to get out of the wood when I'm bunching wood like this just because of the nature of the stand. So there's another white spruce. A lot of this spruce has like a red rot in it. But that makes a nice log right there. We cut wood like that all day, we'd be getting somewhere. Here's the yard. We got Jeff fueled up. And this is the side of a it's a town road, but it's dirt, so I might cut. I don't know. I left those two hardwoods just for some visual, but I don't really know how much it's doing, and it's gonna makes it harder to pile a continuous big pile. So we're gonna yard all the wood here and pile it up, probably where those stumps are, up off the road. That way, this hills on a hill so it should dry out pretty quick and uh, I'm hoping that we can fit most of the wood on this job here um, which you know if you get a pile it'd be pretty tall from the road but as high as west can pile probably have to cut those two trees you probably pile 20 30 loads here so we will see yep so there's this little wooded um, wetland here. It's not a bog, but I guess here in Maine we'd call this a wooded wetland. It separates the side that I just finished cutting from, there's a little more wood right up here where the snow starts back on the road again. And it's not great wood, but it's, it's this wood right, excuse me, right here. And uh, I think he said there's like five or seven acres on this side of the road. And I'll probably open up another spot right in here. And we'll pile the wood on this side right here. And the, I'll show you property lines right. This ore driven right up here on the left. We're pulling up to it here. Or pink ribbon, I guess. So the property lines are start, stopped right here at that pink ribbon. So, and we're only like, uh, we're only like, a, I don't know, half mile from the main road. This road is posted. And I kind of opted to do it because obviously it's further north, there's more snow. But um, I didn't want to go do a job that, you know, you were miles and miles from a unposted road because it's a lot harder to get your equipment moved out depending on um, the road commissioner and stuff. Sometimes they'll let you, sometimes they won't. And sometimes you'll get a low bed outfit that will. Um, go in there anyways but this is so close that if we had to we could just lock the equipment out to the end of the road 
loaded up there. And I don't think anybody really here would care too much anyways. There's only like a couple houses maybe that are on the main road side of the job. So I figured at the very least, like, I was, what I'm really hoping is that there's we've got enough room to forward all the wood, even if we can't get it trucked. And then it'll be sitting there for when this road's they're not posted anymore. See, we're, we're up. I mean, I haven't been driving that long. The main road's right here. So if we, uh, um, ideally, you know, and in, 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 I suppose if the forwarding, um, was too wet then we'll just you know have the whole job processed and cut and then we'll just bring the forwarder back here when oh yeah there's an indian museum right here no we does or however you pronounce that um so anyways it was kind of a you know squeeze one more in and uh see how it goes and i, I mean i think i don't know it'll work out and uh wasn't great wood but that's that's the end of winter so um by the time we're done processing cut there it'll be pretty close to the first of april which will make our mud season not too bad so all right well uh, i was uh trying to do video a week here and be a little more active so we'll catch you guys later